Mayor de Blasio said bluntly today, Deborah Danner should be alive. Here is what we know about Danner. She was 66 and she suffered from mental illness. We also know that police have been called to her home in similar situations several times in the past and that they, she knew, they knew that she suffered from mental illness. Now we're also learning more about the sergeant who fired the shots, 30-year-old Hugh Barry. Barry has been with the NYPD for eight years. Eyewitness News reporter Kimberly Richardson joining us live from the Castle Hill section with new details in this case. Kimberly. Well, Dave, friends tell me they'd often find Deborah Danny standing right here at the bus stop. They admit she was troubled, but say she wasn't dangerous. Police Commissioner James O'Neill didn't hesitate, saying the bottom line is police here ended up taking a life instead of preserving one. She didn't deserve to be dead. Wallace Cook Jr. is talking about his cousin Deborah Danner, who since college wrestled with mental illness. Many here at her home on Pugsley Avenue knew the 66 year old. She lived in a seventh floor apartment, the same place where last night NYPD Sergeant Hugh Barry shot and killed her. Danner's sister lives in a neighboring building, was there when Danner was fatally wounded. I was down the hall from my sister's apartment when I saw the officers rush in and I heard three gunshots. Police Commissioner James O'Neill did not mince words on the heels of this deadly shooting. What is clear in this one instance, we failed. I want to know why it happened. A neighbor called 911 just after 6 saying Danner was acting irrationally. Officials say Sergeant Barry saw the victim sitting on her bed holding scissors. He convinced her to drop them. But authorities maintain Danner then came at the officer with a baseball bat, took a swing at him. He fired two shots. Kirk has known Danner for years. She had a bat. She take one swing, charge her, boom. Come on, come on now. Taser, go shoot her. That very issue is now front and center in this case. Did the sergeant use proper protocol when dealing with an emotionally disturbed person? So our policy is isolate and contain. What is isolate and contain? If you have somebody in a certain area, time is on our side. Danner was in her bedroom. The taser, since last year, the department made it a point, retrained thousands of officers to use the non-lethal weapon. Sergeant Barry knew how to use a taser. Top brass want to know why he didn't. But a spokesperson for the Sergeant's Benevolent Association says Officer Barry feared for his life as Danner grabbed that bat from behind her bed, ignored repeated orders to drop it, charged, then swung at the sergeant's head. But relatives point out police had been here before, knew Danner, that she was schizophrenic. Mayor de Blasio says point blank, Danner should be alive right now. We did fail, and we need to say it out loud, and the people deserve to hear it. Now, Sergeant Barry has again been with the department for eight years. Tonight, he has been placed on modified leave, stripped of his badge and gun. Now, coming up later on Eyewitness News, what one expert has to say about Sergeant Barry's use of deadly force. For now, we're live in the Bronx, Kimberly Richardson, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Kimberly. Well, this afternoon, Reverend Al Sharpton released a statement praising Commissioner O'Neill's comments. He went on to write, the police shooting in the Bronx is atrocious and should not be dismissed. The need for an overhaul in police training and a review of those qualified to become police officers is apparent and must be dealt with. 